yellow books today. I never have yellow books. What the hell is going on? Is it a coincidence? Is it a coincidence? I ask you. Is it a coincidence? Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you are well. And today we're doing another book haul. <laughs> so excited. <laughs> I'm so excited. Book hauls are one of my favorite videos to film. I love just chatting about the books that I have bought and the books I am most excited for currently. It's really dark outside today, so I've got the lights on me really bright, but everything behind me looks really dark. <laughs> so, apologies. All of you. Um, but it's not what I paid for. It's not. It sucks. Two quick just reminders slash announcements before we get into it. I'll try and keep it really brief, but two really exciting things I have got coming up in November. Firstly, I'm holding a read along for the Winter Night Trilogy by Catherine Arden, the first of which is The Burn the Nightingale. And we start in November. It is my favorite fantasy series ever. It is this magical story set in old Russia in the snow with house spirits and a girl trying to figure herself out in the world and old magic and it's just brilliant so if that's something you would be interested in please go join the goodreads group and the twitter down below i'm so excited to be reading this with you i'll also link the announcement video for that and if you didn't know already in november i am co-hosting a readathon it's called the a thousand doors readathon and it is a choose your own adventure readathon it is really unique and really different on the first november at the strike of midnight uk time uh, myself and my two co-hosts emma from drinking by my shelf and tasman from tea books and tasman Tasman, we're each going to post a reading prompt and you can choose any of those three as your starting point and we'll give you a prompt, you go away and read a book and then based on what you think of that book you go through the next door to find out what your next prompt is. So you can't plan for it, you have no idea what the prompts are going to be beforehand. I'm so excited, it's my first like big readathon I'm ever co-hosting. It's going to be so much fun, I just had the unpredictable nature of it, I have no idea what I'm going to be reading for it. I'm really excited so I'll link that as well. Right, let's get into the books shall we? That's what we're all here for. Should we speed it up a little bit? Yeah. So I have, I think, about like 18 physical books here, but I'm also going to show you the books that I have bought on Audible because I typically only use Scribd, but I have been buying quite a few books on Audible lately. So I'm going to show you them because technically I have bought them, but I have got a lot of physical books to get through as well. So the first one, this is like absolutely crazy. Like this is madness. I fully cannot believe this. I have been sent The Sanatorium by Sarah Pierce, but I have been sent The Ark. I have never been sent an Ark which if you don't know is an advanced reader's copy. They often get sent out to booktubers and book bloggers so we can review the books before it comes out. And I've always wanted to receive an ARC. <laughs> and I never have. No one's ever liked me enough before. But now someone has. This is a story about a girl And if you know me, this is exactly the type of thing I enjoy. So we got sent this little invitation to Le Sommet. The summit. The five star luxury hotel situated in the Swiss Alps renovated from the town's oldest sanatorium. And essentially what this is about, a detective who is staying at the hotel with her brother and his fiance, and they kind of get this uneasy feeling there. Then his fiance disappears. And then it turns out another woman has gone missing. So there's a lot of women going missing in this old strange hotel. And I think it's probably gonna be like a murder mystery. I don't know if anyone's gonna be murdered, but it kind of gives me that vibe. Um, it really reminds me of The Last by Hannah Jameson which is like that is like a nuclear apocalypse murder mystery but it's got that same kind of like old semi decrepit hotel really isolated feeling so I'm so excited to read this. I saw this straight away and I was like oh my god that sounds like something I would love and then I straight away requested the arc and then I got it. <laughs> what sorcery is this? Thank you so much to Transworld Publishers for sending me this. I feel so lucky. And yeah, I'm gonna get to it really, really soon. Another book that arrived yesterday. See, the ones I bought most recently or received most recently are the ones like I wanna tell you about straight away. But this finally arrived yesterday and it is Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. This is so hard to get your hands on in the UK. Only one place called Blackwells I could get it from. I couldn't get it from Waterstones. I couldn't get it from Amazon. So then I went and tried this and I could get it, but it was like 19 pounds. Why did I do that? 
<laughs> but I've just made a massive mistake and now I'm really annoyed. I really loved Lock Every Door by Riley Sager and I got really excited to try the rest of his stuff. It very much reminds me of Haunting of Hill House or like the premise of it does in the sense that there's this house that the family lived in many years ago and they only lasted 20 days before fleeing in the, in the night. And our protagonist's father wrote a very popular like horror ghost book book about it but she doesn't feel like she remembers if I'm right I'm <laughs> completely lying to you we're not surprised and she is going back to the house to renovate it and it's spooky dark ghostly I love the cover I love the kind of like glow in the dark cover of this I'm so excited to read this I'm gonna be reading it really soon in a reading vlog that's why I allowed myself to buy it <laughs> tell me if you read this because I know a lot of people have and I just can't wait for that spooky ghostly feeling so very excited next let's talk about a few books that i picked up in my local waterstones recently obviously i haven't been in leeds for like six months so i hadn't got to go to the waterstones here and i love the waterstones here it's a really really nice one and i have a really good selection of books so i popped in there and i let myself get a few books the first of which is nick and charlie by alice oseman this is a really short novella by alice oseman and it's only this and the, her newest novella, This Winter, that's all I haven't read from Alice Oseman, so I definitely want to make my way through them too. So this is about Nick and Charlie, some of my favourite characters in the literature ever. If you don't know, they um, are the protagonists in her Heartstopper graphic novel series. And I think this novella is set... Oh, I've got like a hair on my mouth. Okay, I got it. don't know how long that's been there, I'm sorry. <laughs> I think this is set just after Heartstopper 3, maybe, or just before Solitaire, because they're also in her novel Solitaire. I'm not entirely sure. I just love these characters. This is like semi-illustrated as well. We've got a few pages that have illustrations on them. And I just love these characters. It's a tiny, tiny book. I think it's like just over 150 pages, but the font is massive to like make it get there. So I think this is going to be perfect for my readathon coming up. If I can fit this into a prompt, I'm definitely going to read it then we just all love Nick and Charlie oh he fills my heart with warmth once I saw it how could I say no to two of my favorite boys so god they just make me they make me so happy <laughs> that's very yellow isn't it look at like the three we've talked about so far we're very yellow Apparently I've got a thing for yellow books. What the hell? <laughs> Next was a very spur of the moment decision. <laughs> and it is The Devil and the Dark Water by Stuart Turton. So this is the author of The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle, which I haven't read yet. <laughs> I probably should have read that and seen if I like this author before buying their new release for a lot of money. I should probably take that money sticker off. However, when I heard the premise of this book, I had, I had no choice. Like I literally didn't have a decision in the matter. <laughs> and then when I saw these sprayed edges, ladies. And so we all gag nation on this. I really didn't have a choice. Oh my God. So this is like waves of water because this book I believe is a murder mystery set on a boat in 1634. On the inside here, we've got a really cool diagram of the ship and it just sounds so mysterious. And I haven't read a murder mystery set on the sea in historical, I just love, I just love the vibes of it. I just love what it promises. So yes, I should have read The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle, which I own before this. I am gonna be reading it soon, like within the next month or so. It's a big boy as well, this book. It's like hefty. You could, you could kill someone with this book. That bitch is so fucking evil. Why would she say that? I want to know, like, the more I think about the bitch, the more I think that she must be straight up evil. I am so excited to get to this. And I think if I enjoy The Seven Deaths of Evan Hardcastle, this will be one that I pick up ASAP. Okay, so next, a very kind subscriber called Mackenzie sent me Muse of Nightmares by Lainey Taylor. She watched my vlog where I read Strange the Dreamer. Um, <laughs> I cried a lot. <laughs> so, I just finished it. And it's made me cry quite a bit. <laughs> I said in the vlog, like, I want to get into its sequel straight away. I haven't read it yet. <laughs> but I will soon. I'm, I'm really excited to finish off this duology. I'm scared. I'm terrified. Like, 
Stranger Dreamer ends in a way that just makes you terrified to start this. Like I, I actually feel dread. I can't even really explain the plot of Stranger Dreamer to you because stuff gets explained at quite late stages. But essentially we follow Laszlo Strange as he is obsessed with the lost city of Weep when he's younger, but then he finds out that he actually has an opportunity to travel there and to work for the people there and to uncover the mystery of why it's forgotten and what the city has suffered. But it's so much more than that. Like it's so much, I can't tell you the plot because I would spoil it. Lainey Taylor's writing does something to me like viscerally. Like it's my perfect writing style. I love the kind of purple prose. I hate that, I hate that term though, purple prose. I hate all, all the peas. It's like overly, too many peas. <laughs> But it's just the most beautiful, magical, whimsical, fairy tale like writing. And I think it's not something a lot of people can pull off. Thank you very much, Mackenzie. I can't wait to get to this. I'm also terrified and dreading it at the same time. <laughs> Next, we have two amazing books that a lovely subscriber, Alison, sent to me completely out of the blue off my wish list. Like I was not expecting it. This past arrived. I was like, what is this? What is this? And then I opened these two books and I like cry. <laughs> So the first is Felix Ever After by Kaysen Callender. I love the cover for this. I think it's such a beautiful cover. One of my favorite kind of like young adult contemporary covers ever. So this is about our character named Felix who is trans. Kind of his struggles being black, queer and transgender, you know, having so many marginalizations to his name and how how difficult that is for a person to get through life in this kind of like shitty society we live in. But then a anonymous student starts posting pictures of Felix before he transitioned, dead naming him. And it's kind of just Felix dealing with that situation. I know that his friends play a really big role in this. I have heard so many wonderful things about Case and Calendar's writing. And I just had so many people say so many good things about this book that I had to pick it up. I'm so excited to read this. I think this would be another great option for a read a readathon or something as well because it is a YA contemporary. Thank you so much, Alison. I'm very excited. And guess what I've just noticed? It's yellow. I didn't even plan this. I didn't wear yellow because I have a lot of yellow books. But we've got a lot of yellow books today. I never have yellow books. What the hell is going on? Is it a coincidence? Is it a coincidence? I ask you. Is it a coincidence? Very excited to read that. And then Alison also got me A Song of Race and Ruin by Roseanne A. Brown. This is a fantasy. And like, I'm not gonna lie to you, I don't know too much about the plot. I saw the cover and I was sold. <laughs> I've seen a lot of people give it really good ratings and so that was enough for me to put it on my wish list. The cover is beautiful. I feel like the vibes of this are gonna be like immaculate and I'm trying to read more diverse fantasy. I feel like our fantasy can often be so white, like so white and I often really enjoy diverse fantasy worlds. They're often my favorite fantasy. You know, I really love Girls with Paper and Fire. That for me is one of the best YA fantasies I have ever read. I think it's incredible and so yeah, as soon as I saw this had so many good reviews, a lot of people were reading it for their book club. I knew I wanted it. So thank you very much, Alison. I feel very lucky. <laughs> Next, I have two more books that I bought when I shouldn't have, because I don't have the money to buy these books. So like, why did I do this? Now I am on a book buying ban until after my birthday. My birthday's at the end of January. So I'm gonna receive books for Christmas. I'm gonna receive books for my birthday. This is the last book haul until after my birth. Well, no, I'll do a book haul for Christmas and a book haul for my birthday. But like, I'm not buying anything. I'm not allowing myself to buy anything. That's not happening. So this was the last hurrah. <laughs> I picked up When No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole. Alyssa Cole has traditionally been published as a romance author. This is her first thriller and it excites me so much. It is a thriller about gentrification in Brooklyn. Our protagonist noticed that all of her black neighbors are kind of moving out and white neighbors moving in and there's something more sinister at play. And I've just heard so many good things about this. I know Riley really enjoyed it. I think I saw Mina had written it quite highly the other day and I'm just so excited to get into this. I think that a thriller with a really different topic, I get so bored of hearing about all those thrillers that are like a crazy woman or woman hates woman or whatever. Like I just hate that. I, I can't read that anymore. Like I just can't do it. So this sounds like it has a really interesting and niche topic. So I'm really excited to get into this. Then I also picked up, I realize I've done this in the wrong order because I'm about to show number three after this, but I picked up the fourth 
in the Hercule Poirot series. I picked it up in the special edition because I really liked like the way it looked. I thought it looked really cool rather than just like the normal editions. As someone who wants to write murder mystery and who really likes reading murder mystery, I'm trying to make my way through all of the Hercule Poirot series. Whenever I talk about Agatha Christie, I feel a requirement, like I feel a duty to talk about how some of her books are racist and like explain why I'm still reading her stuff. And I think, I think it's different. Like people be like, oh Megan, you said the help was racist and you don't want to read that. Well, that was published more recently. <laughs> like, I, I think that there's certain authors that we can't blame for being products of their time. Their time was wrong and abhorrent, but as someone who wants to write a murder mystery, I feel like Agatha Christie is someone that I need to read to really learn from in terms of the craft. It is a difficult one for me and like sometimes it doesn't sit right, but then I remember every other time I see someone else reading Agatha Christie and they never talk about it. <laughs> like no one ever discusses the original name for And There Were None. Like no one ever talks about this. And I always feel like I have to, and then I feel bad, but I don't, I'm not gonna be the type of person who just like pretends these issues aren't there. Like that is an issue with Agatha Christie's stuff, but I think as long as you read it through that lens like I think sometimes the issue with modern literature that is racist is that people don't know it's racist do you know what I mean like people read that and absorb the ideas um and take them on as their own like take racist ideals on as their own without knowing that it's racist whereas I think as long as I read her stuff like on the lookout for that like trying to make myself aware and like be really aware of when something is racist. I think that, that is the best I can do. I think this is one of her most popular ones. I hear a lot about the big four, so I'm very intrigued to read it, but I need to read the next, like, I'm gonna show you number three in a second. So <laughs> I can't get to this until I've read that. <laughs> next, the wonderful Molly sent me The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. I feel so lucky to receive this. She got me it like as soon as it came out. Molly always sends me far too many books. This has been getting so much hype. Like so many people have been loving this. It sounds so magical. I love a magical library. Like that is a subgenre of my favorite things in books. I love it. I love it. Magical libraries, just give them all to me. Any book with that, I'm instantly sold. The only book I've ever read by Matt Haig was The Humans. And I don't think I loved it. I didn't love it, but hopefully, I think it was just not my kind of book, but this sounds more like my kind of book. So hopefully I will love this. So next, my grandparents just sent me loads of books out the blue. Thank you, Anne and Ken. I know you're watching this. Let's talk about how iconic they are for a second. Like they love Ruth Ware. They've, they've read loads of Riley Sager. Like they're thriller icons my grandparents <laughs> they listen to all my recommendations when it comes to thrillers anyway so yeah they sent me four books the first of which is the murder of roger Ackroyd by Ma agatha christie which is number three so yeah i need to get to this one first again this is one that i hear a lot of good things about i really hope i'm gonna get to this soon i really like listening to the audio books for the agatha christie books alongside reading the physical books i think it's such a nice way to enjoy them they've often got like unique it's like sound effects and like sounds like we're in the 1920s, 1930s. And I just, I just love that. I like stand it. So when was this published even? 1926. Oh my God, that's so long ago. This is another one I'm thinking, I'm eyeing up the Thousand Doors Readathon. I might pick this if it fits a prompt because it's something I think I can get through really quick. They also sent me a book I've already read. I read it for my Bacopoli vlog, which I will link. And that is Silver in the Wood by Emily Tesh. This is this woodland, dark, magical story. It's it's super short, it's only like 100 pages, so I read it really fast in like an hour or two. And I'd really, really recommend it. It has this such unique vibe to it. I want more kind of like fairy, woodish, magical stories. The woods are such a cool setting. I feel like they're not explored enough. Don't be shy, put some more. Put some more. Next, they bought me Uprooted by Naomi Novik. Now, if you watch all my videos, you know recently I bought and unhauled A Deadly Education by Naomi Novik for the kind of microaggressions that a lot of people say was in it. I haven't heard anything negative about this series. And so, so many people who I have very similar tastes to have loved this. And so I still think it's something that I really want to get to. It reminds me, it sounds a lot like The Baron and Nightingale in the kind of vibes of it. I don't know if it is. It just sounds like it has that kind of whimsical, old, magical, 
fairy tale setting. It's something a lot of people recommend to me that I, they think I'd like. So I'm hoping for good things from it. <laughs> Next we have Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. So this is a standalone fantasy and that is one of the main reasons that I wanted to read this because when you get into a fantasy series like you're there for a long time and sometimes it's nice to just pick up a singular fantasy book that doesn't have a sequel to it. So this is again about libraries I think. I think that our protagonist has always known that she was going to be a kind of keeper of the libraries in some way but then something terrible happens and she has to go on this magical fantastical adventure from what I know about it um, and this is one that like I heard a lot about in one little time period from booktube and, and everyone, everyone kind of forgot about it. it I feel like no one's really talked about it since but I love the cover of it I think the cover of it is so cool with like this lettering I love the lettering on it I just think that this is oh my god Catherine Arden blurbed it it's meant to be no I don't think you understand I'm obsessed. If Catherine Arden blurbed it, that is just another thing in its favour. That is just another positive. Um, oh, so excited to get to this. I think it's just the perfect thing to like, oh, I don't have to commit to another fantasy series. I can just read this and then I'm done. That's all it is. <laughs> These next few books I'm only going to talk about quickly because you have seen them in videos already. The first of which is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. Look at the edges. Gold glittery edges, we stand. She's strong, she's powerful, she knows what she wants. When you walk into the room, you know she's there. She's a blessing and a curse. She's wild, she's free. I read this in a dedicated reading vlog and cried a lot. It was emotional. <laughs> and I gave this about four stars. I did really, really enjoy it. It's this really gorgeous, slow book. And this look at these characters, but I didn't feel attached to Addie that much, which is very strange. I felt more attached to another character we meet in the story called Henry. But the ending of this is just genius like the way it all ties together at the end is is so clever it was just a beautiful haunting story so i would really recommend it i know a lot of people will have been speaking about it lately i just think it's a really fun read not fun it's actually kind of sad like it's not fun at all at any point the whole thing is sad what am i talking about a very special unique imaginative story so definitely recommend next i have got two of the most beautiful books ever i received both of these in my fairy new boxes so i have starred Daughter by Shveta Thakkar and I have Fable by Adrian Young. These have glittery sprayed edges also. I think these are like slightly better. They're really well done. Like they're so gorgeous. I will link in the description both. Let me put them both here. Both of my fairy really unboxings where I unbox these two. I am so excited to get to both of these. They are both young adult. They both don't feel very scary. So hopefully I'll get to them soon. This is about a girl who has some kind of affinity with the stars and she gets called up into the stars to have some kind of duel or battle, I think to save her father or something. I don't know, but it's a gorgeous cover. Like, it's so beautiful. And then this cover was actually a redesign by Fairy Lee, which I love. And this is just like a mermaid story, which I'm very intrigued by because I haven't read mermaid stories that often. So obviously these aren't books I picked out myself, but I'm so happy that I own them. I'm so excited to read them both. Any bad Again, I feel like these would both be great picks for a readathon. That's obviously all, all I'm thinking about right now is what I'm going to read in my readathon. They're just so beautiful. I think that Fairy Loot is such an amazing company. I've loved all of the boxes I've received so far from them. I luckily have been being sent them. Their quality of the objects that you get in the boxes are like crazy like they're absolutely amazing i was so shocked when i opened my first box and got my items because they were just like such high quality and the books are just beautiful and amazing and i love them so i cannot wait to receive my next fairy loot box this month the last physical book i have to tell you about i left till last is also yellow <laughs> I left this last because I didn't actually purchase it. It is my mum's, but I kind of like absorbed it into my collection. And it is Q by Christina Dauka. So this is the author of Vox, which is I think her, her more like well-known book. But I think I read that and like DNF'd it years and years and years ago. I just didn't like it. I'm more intrigued in this because what I've heard in reviews is that you basically either like one or the other. The description says, in this world, perfection is everything. And so it's again this kind of dystopian look at where society could possibly 
possibly go if we follow down the routes that we are or looking at certain aspects of our society and kind of like magnifying them I guess. I'm really intrigued by this. It's not one I think I'm going to get to ASAP just because it wasn't one that I bought but it's nice having it here and I may read it at some point. <laughs> That's never gonna happen. Ever, 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 Tiffany, ever, ever, ever in a million years. And then quickly, I'm just gonna chat to you about the audiobooks which I have bought recently on Audible. The first is one I'm actually listening to right now and loving, and it is Sleeping Giants by Sylvain Nouvelle. So, this, oh my god, I cannot wait to finish this and speak to you about it in my October wrap up. It is so good. This audiobook is so good. So this is about a, a statue of a sleeping giant that is being retrieved and rebuilt by these this kind of secret weird organization. We still don't know what's going on with that at the point I'm at in the book. The lead scientist on the case actually stumbled across the first piece when she was a child, the hand. And since then, like we found like a forearm and a like leg and stuff. And the brilliant thing about this audiobook is that it's told through these files with like interviews with our different characters and diary entries that they have recorded. It's a full cast so we have different narrators for each of the characters and it's just so goddamn cool like I'm loving it so much obviously I love sci-fi when it has some kind of like added cool element to it but it reminds me of a, a lot of Illuminae in the kind of un unique way that it's told I'm just absolutely obsessed with it I'm loving it so so far I really recommend that I also got Daisy Jones and the Six audiobook I have read this already I gave it like a 4.5 stars probably basically a 5 and I wanted to reread it via the audiobook because I've heard so many good things about the audiobook like people love it because again this has a full cast for all of our different characters I bought the audiobook for How to Be Anti-Racist by Ibram X. Kennedy I've heard so many good things about this it is a non-fiction book about being anti-racist reading non-fiction is something that I really really love to do particularly on topics such as race and gender and class I've heard a lot of people say the audiobook is really good I believe that it is narrated by him I'm pretty sure and I've just heard so many wonderful things about it next I also got The Deep by River Solomon and V Diggs. I think it's I think the book is by River Solomon, but it's based on a song by David Diggs, I'm pretty sure. I asked on Twitter, what books from my wish list should I buy an audiobook for? And I heard so many good things about The Deep. It just feels like a really special book. I've heard that it's haunting and kind of heartbreaking and just this like wonderful, impactful story. And then the last audiobook I got was The Spy and the Traitor by Ben McIntyre. Now this is completely out of the blue. Like this isn't the kind of thing I would usually get, but I heard Emma from Drinking By My Shell talk about this a ton and about how she didn't think she'd enjoy it but then loved it and it's basically a story about this double agent in the cold war like it's non-fiction about this guy and it's just so different than anything I would usually read but when she spoke about it I was just sold like she sold it to me <laughs> Absolutely. That is all the books I have bought lately. I'm not allowed to buy any more until like February next year. Like it's banned. I'm not allowed to do it. I have got more than enough here. I've got my lovely little collection. <laughs> okay. I hope you enjoyed this book haul. Let me know down below if you've read any of these. If you've waited till the end, comment a yellow emoji. Any emoji that's yellow, just so I know you stayed here to the end, just to celebrate all the yellow books we seem to have in this. And yeah, let me know if you've read any of these, if you've enjoyed them, if you've got your eye on any of them, let a gal know. And yeah, I will see you very, very soon in another video. Bye.